Zach. Thank you for joining me for this interview um, for our tribal entrepreneurship program. Um, as we get started, I just kind of want you to introduce yourself, um, who you are, what you do, and why did you decide to become a liaison for the tribal entrepreneurship program? Yeah, thank you, Cecilia. Good morning. Uh, my name is Zachariah Ben. Zachariah Ben in Asia. Yeah, it's a national. I was a touch me by Shashin, Kinsachini, Nashache, Ashi, and Nashanella. I am the owner and founder of Bitty Baby Foods LLC. We specialize in producing indigenous baby food. Um, and what got me interested and wanting to be a part of not only just conversations, but initiatives that can be created out of you know, being a, a, a tribal liaison, being able to help navigate the economic landscapes and hardships and red tape and bureaucracy and challenges and even momentous moments here on the Navajo Nation side of economics. Uh, especially you know, for ourselves as Bitty Baby Foods, we are established on the Navajo Nation. Uh, we did this out of um, our revenue and our taxes to uh, immediately uh, be reinvested back into the community. Um, and so that's just one big example of, you know, being able to help other businesses establish themselves here on the Navajo Nation, on reservations of their own, um, the state of New Mexico, um, in order to, again, grow. And, and, and then we grow and develop these ideas into businesses. Those are resources that are being immediately implemented into the community. I'm curious, um, can you tell me kind of what experiences led you um, to the work you're doing today with Bitty Baby Foods and then also to wanting to be a liaison? So the work that got us involved into Bitty Baby Foods was inspiration from my wife and I's son. He is a year and a half currently. Um, and so with that, we, um, we've seen a lack of food access for uh, prenatal to three-year-olds. And we wanted to uh, create a product that is organic, that is um, indigenous, indigenous produce using natural resources at home on the reservation um, and implementing Again, and while in a way we're, we're preserving, we're preserving, we're protecting those natural resources while feeding our children with those resources. And um, so for us, when we went into the market to say, okay, we have a newborn, we want to have his first foods be um, indigenous food, food that is um, that has been a staple for his heritage, for his culture. And we did not find anything. And so we as farmers, we realized like, why don't we make our own baby food? Why don't we make our own food for our son? And so in doing this, you know, my wife sort of pureeing down Nishiji, which is Navajo dried steamed corn. And I, it go, the corn goes through an added belly process. And from there, she was like, wow, you know, why don't we puree this down and boil it? And um, as soon as she put it together and fed our child, like that was what a provider should be. That's what a steward should be whether it be in business, farming, land, water, like, or, or as a parent, like being able to, to see a need um, and to address it. Um, and so we realized like, why don't we provide this food for everybody else and all of their children? Um, so, our, so our son can be that generation to where they are encoded with our first foods, not outside foods that are processed and preserved or going through uh, or that are commercialized. This is our food. And so, um, you know, this food of his ancestors, uh, he was tasting again. Um, and so we were very happy to provide that resource. Uh, so excuse me, what was the second question to that? Um, just kind of um, what, so you have your experience as an entrepreneur and then what kind of led you to wanting to be a liaison on top of that? So, and then, so, you know, realizing how much of a impact that we were having with our product in itself. Um, and then after being established as an LLC 
And alongside the LLC, we are one of the first agricultural cooperatives on the Navajo Nation to get um, along with the LLC. We're like, wow, you know, this is kind of interesting. Uh, you know, we, we thought there would be more. <laughs> and so with that, we wanted to be that example. We wanted to show, um, especially if, uh, producers, farm producers, like, you know, this is the possibility of, you know, these are the benefits of establishing your own business. So that way you're not just doing itinerant sales at the flea market and just walking home with cash and not reinvesting it back into your community or seeing where your money goes or investing it into border towns that, um, that take advantage of our people. And so, you know, that's, those are the, 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 I guess, in a way, the sparks that were flying around, like, wow, you know, we can do this as a business. And these are the types of things that um, we can provide for our people. So why don't we be that example, not only just as a food producer for baby food, but also as a business, how can we get more businesses involved? How can we network to get people inspired? to be like, oh, well, I can, you know, if I'm an artist, you know, and I want to do more with my work and to be able to have a benefit of a business that will allow them to um, invest into their community and in order to bring resources also do their business into the community directly and having that immediate impact. Like, you know, that was something that we felt we needed. Um, and then when the position came up that, you know, UNM was looking for a tribal liaison. I was like, wow, this is exactly the type of um, position that, you know, we need to be in. These are the type of networks that we need to create. And, you know, it was, it was kind of like just a, a coincidence that that arise. And I was like, okay, this is what we need to do. We need to do this together um, as Bitty Baby Foods, as an LS, uh, as um, with UNM. Um, and, and to that way we can get more people inspired, more motivation, and, to, and again, to, to help them navigate and also to give them the guidance of, you know, creating a business and making those dreams come true and providing those resources for your community. I can imagine um, starting a business on the reservation is a lot different um, than it would be outside of the reservation. And I'm just curious if we can talk about maybe some of the barriers or um, hardships that you found with starting your business and then kind of how you've overcame some of those barriers. I think a number one barrier for a lot of businesses is um, immediate like funding to start up the business. Um, and so for us, we were, um, you know, trying to figure that out as well. Like we had a business account with zero dollars in there <laughs> and, you know, we, we, we need employees to pay. We need gas to get us from, our home to our business or our, our business to our farm, like being able to understand that um, was a very big challenge, you know, understanding budgeting, understanding money. Um, and so for us natives, we don't have a healthy relationship with economics. We don't have a healthy relationship with money. And seeing that, you know, we wanted to be again, different in order to be that example, we, um, saw that over like, I guess like 80% to 80% of our Navajo people on the reservation, they live on an annual income of 20,000. And for us, when we started our business, we had to invest into infrastructure for the farm, not even including gas or um, stipends for our employees. Like, and that in itself was already just well over 20 grand. So how can we address that type of economic situation? And that was um, one very big challenge that came up to also like uh, copycat sales, like um, for other producers in the area to um, start copycatting our product. Okay, this is where copyright comes in. This is where trademarking comes in things that I didn't even think of, like we're starting to arise and to, um, again, pay for those things and, and to also 
fill out applications to get those things going to hire a lawyer in order to get your trademarking done like that in itself was a, a challenge to um and like doing business on the reservation you have to navigate yourself um with little guidance on the taxing situation like okay am i collecting taxes and for us we're a food and we're providing dry food goods so it's like uh you technically cannot be taxed but you're gonna need a letter of from us to say you can't be taxed but you know so like things like that arose to um and then also when we were applying for our business, we had to be, how would you say, not pushy, but just very uh, communicative. Like just con const you just have to have a constant contact to um, the Navajo Nation Business um, Development Center where, you know, you just had to call them every day in order to see where your application stood, if it is being processed, how far along, um, and that just goes to, you know, being able to, um, you know, just to have that constant contact with them to, um, once that was established, like then you, you start building relationships. Um, and that's something that, you know, we, we didn't see it as, um, you know, like, a how would you say, like, we didn't see it as them, you know, turning us away. It was just more of like they themselves were learning their processes because for us what made it unique was that there was new people coming into the positions and to so for us it was like really hard to you know go from another person to another person um and you know just again just that the application process um was a very big challenge so just keeping that constant contact um and i think uh let's see oh like another like social challenge like arose that people don't even think about for the health of outside the business is your own personal parts of like um you know the crabs in a bucket mentality like that is an unfortunate um situation that we see here in the reservation like oh you have a business well why don't you um invest into me and my family or like even personally i will share the story because it's a teaching is that you know setting up boundaries against uh, your own family don't mix family with business, like being able to understand that and to establish that in order to um, nurture your business, nurture your own personal family. And again, that's when the long run, which, you know, to have that foresight will immediately impact your family and your community for the better. That's awesome. I think that's all really good. Um advice and also lessons learned um, that other entrepreneurs can benefit from. Um, and I guess another question I want to ask is when it comes to entrepreneurship, not just for you, but also for your community, um, what's your goal? Like, what, what are your hopes and dreams for your community and, and how you see entrepreneurship impacting your community for us you know it's being able to um again set that example um and the goals of expanding our business for and in healthy ways to be efficient to not immediately start looking to ways of expanding into commercialism or um and, and and i think most importantly um is sticking to our values that we currently have now and to i guess in a way to keep that and to to how would you say like cultivate that um that idea or those um principles of social entrepreneurship you know, so that way we never, those goals of not ever going into a capitalistic business mindset of like, okay, I'm only in this for an individual gain and I'm only looking to um, sell this much product and, uh, you know, to, to stay away from those types of um, thoughts and, and, and practices. So I think for us, in order to do that, we have to continue to be involved in the community. 
when we do expand, we're going to have the community involved. When we do decide to create more resources and to be that change, um, I think that's something that, you know, is, is a very, again, is it's cultivating and nurturing those goals into fruition. Um, and so five years from now, we see not only our farm uh, as official producers with certification, but also five more on top of that, and especially the youth. Um, and in 10 years, we see a whole agricultural network of producers that will be selling worldwide and producing worldwide with the, I guess in a way with the, within that 10 years. Um, and that's what we see is being able to continue on those goals and that path. And again, that starts with home, then the business, and then into your community. That's awesome. I think a lot of what you're talking about is in some ways a lot of what's lacking um, in a lot of businesses nowadays. So I think it's awesome um, that you just have those values at the forefront of your life and your business. And um, I think that's awesome because I do think those values are the heart of um, what it means to be a native and tribal entrepreneur, um, just sticking to the values and um, knowing where you came from and not um, straying from that. Um, so I think that's really awesome. Um, and I'm just curious, how many um, jobs have you been able to create so far? I know you have some people who you said you pay stipends to. Um, I'm just curious, like for my own um, curiosity, if you could share that with me. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, that is very important because it shows how much of an impact you are already having, you know. And so for us, we currently have uh, two fellowships. Um, one is a supervisor position because that's from years of experience that we've um, not noticed, but that we've uh, that we've seen, I guess. And so. Um, you know, we have, do have those two positions and those are currently filled. And then we have two farm laborers that we're looking to for, for high schoolers. And so we have three high schoolers and one college level. Um, and so they filled those positions up and we currently have a new position that just opened up and that was uh, helping in the <laughs> manufacturing and packaging process. And so they had to get like a little bit more like certification and like food safety terms. Um, and so that is currently filled. And then also not only do, are we looking to, you know, have that type of economic impact through employees, but also um, like also being a resource on the reservation by allowing volunteers to come in, especially these college students who need, uh, you know, to fill in volunteer hours for their schooling. Um, we are working to become an official site with, and we're working with different um, community colleges and universities in order to be that site. So, um, but yeah, those are just like one of the many ways that we're providing that type of uh, site slash space for our youth. That's awesome. Um, just one more question. Um, before we get off, um, what is like one piece of advice that you would give to an entrepreneur listening to this or who is interested in maybe starting their business or expanding it, but maybe they're a little hesitant um, and nervous to take that leap? Um, what's one piece of advice that you would give to them? I think the one piece of advice would be um, that you are doing the right thing. You are doing the right thing in terms of, again, providing and seeing a lack of resources within your community. And now you wanna provide that. And that is the right thing to do. That is action being taken rather than being talked about. And that's what we need um, from our business owners. And as an entrepreneur, you just with that very thought, your business will be successful and 
products or services that you'll provide will immediately um, have an impact. And that's something that, you know, we need more of. And I am happy that you are taking that leap of faith <laughs> into that direction. And we will be here to help guide you. Um, and so thank you all so much for um, being a part of this conversation. And I think I want to leave off with a really good advice that I learned was that if your child is a product of their environment, why don't we change the environment as stewards, as providers, as uh, business owners? So thank you. Thank you so much, Zach, for your time and for um, just sharing your story and your insight. Um, we're really excited to have you with us as a liaison um, and looking forward to all the work that we'll be doing with you going forward. So thank you very much.